related two links in the chat by all means check it out the first one the article in new england journal of medicine good news looks like that the new bivalent vaccine neutralizes everything exclude including xbb1 and works pretty well uh the for the xbb1 the antibody titer has went up more than threefold after the initiation after the vaccine after the booster the article is there this is a short letter it's not actually very complicated if you need to get exact numbers by all means uh, it's there in the link you don't need to have any passwords or anything so what that means is that can you translate that to the actual clinical data meaning will the booster actually prevent some of the cases of the COVID so this is the study two second link that says CDC in it so basically, uh, nearly 50% of, uh, of all COVID is prevented by the new booster. Uh, to be exactly, I believe, all comers, it was 48% prevention. Um, we already knew, so this is new data, we already knew that the severity of illness significantly less with whatever the booster you decide to do. But we didn't know that you can actually prevent some of the cases of infection. So this is reassuring that indeed it does happen. So that's all I have for COVID. Um, and actually, I was preparing to do the whole um, wellness talk. Uh, but thank God that uh, Reza is coming. So that's wonderful. So what I'm going to talk about, those of you who are following some of the new major business development have may have seen already that uh, we're about to enter a, a dramatic change in drug pricing uh, it will have it's happening on the grassroots so first of all amazon three days ago announced the five dollar unlimited medication per month supply uh shipping free so that's probably going to be every existing generic drug you will be sending the way to find out about it well, let me try to see if i can figure this out right away you have to be an amazon prime member that's how they're going to make money and it's supposed to be somewhere in there um and it may not be yet there so they just announced it three days ago so i guess oh here there's an amazon clinic so if you click on that <clears throat> i guess let me show the screen i'll probably go easier that way so this is my Amazon Prime. Um, this is like if we go back into the main account. Um, so this is Amazon Clinic. But if I go back, this is just the general Amazon. So here you click on the clinic and you get this page where basically you can buy whatever you have to buy. So here's a let's pick something. Anybody wants to pick something? You guys have a particular burning drug question? Drop it in the chat um so i can see uh no booster since i'm gonna answer questions while I'm waiting it's we're talking about the same bivalent booster that you got in september okay um i don't know what to pick anybody drop something and i don't want to pick something myself i want you to drop a topic okay i uh, let's pick pink eye all right like, hold on let me go back pink eye thank you is there a pink eye uh i don't see a pink eye here Oh, here. Okay. Okay. So um, this is basically the way this works, I guess. You do the messaging and uh, literally they give you some recommendation and then you can get medications. Um, let's go back here for a second. Okay. So what prescription can I get renewed? So this is their current list of meds that all of them will be five dollars per month any any one of them it's five dollars unlimited per each drug for each medication so if you have five you're going to be paying 25 dollars. okay so that's the first thing i wanted to show now this is probably still in a kind of an early stages so i'm not sure about functionality but do pay attention because they're just introduced this all right the second is um where is that uh no sorry let me stop sharing for a second i need to find the actual website so the second one is even more interesting in my opinion uh it's a uh, mark cuban had started this company 
And it's basically, that's where the, I think the major change is going to occur because the, the pricing in the drugs is so dramatically lower and it's so transparent that I think we're going to see a major, major changes. All right. I can't find it. So just give me one second. I got to go to, I posted a YouTube video about this because I felt strongly that this needs to be present. If anybody is interested in it's on my channel, oops, no, not that. All right, so there we go. Yeah, let me bring my screen back up here. All right, so what are you guys seeing? Are you seeing the Epic or are you seeing my, you know, are you seeing the Cost Plus? Cost Plus. Okay, great. So this is the new company started by Mark Cuban. Um, so look at this. So I'm going to go back to the main page. Now, nobody's probably taking this medication. This is a medication for one of the leukemias. The usual price with insurance is $2,000, Here's it's $14 a month. And if you look across all this, so here's a drug lisinopril, very common generic drug, cheap. So, you know, but it's $24 to $3. But I'm going to show you something, this. So I recommend this drug uh, sometimes for certain types of uh, intestinal problems. Like there's this condition called blastocystis hominis, which is kind of hard to treat. Um, and the usual course for a month is about two to three thousand dollar range with copay. That's a two thousand dollar copay after insurance. Uh, this is thirty three dollars. I mean, they're saying $4,000, that's wrong. Nobody in DC area will, no insurance, no pharmacy will charge $400, it will be minimum $2,000. So how do they do this? Well, here's where the revolutionary idea came. This price always comes from one particular point, is that a lot of medications, you cannot obtain generics easily directly from pharmacy because they're, they're playing games. The insurances and, and, and pharmacies will gang up and they will try to sell you trade names for certain drugs. Moreover, even the trade names like this one, for example, that would cost $24, this is the markup. You're paying to the pharmacy. You're paying for the delivery to pharmacy. You're paying negotiated price because also the, the, the way this works is before pharmacies buy the drug, they also have to buy it through an insurance agent. So there's like three or four layers where money gets spread between. Here, what they did is fascinating. I, I just find the whole mission is just incredible. They basically, here, they're, they describe it somewhere there. They basically charge 15% of the cost of manufacturing price plus $3 for the labor because you have to package it, right? and $5 flat shipping fee, that's it. Completely transparent. So basically you never pay any of those intermediary fees for anything. And this is, you don't use any insurance here. It's a full price. So if you have Medicare, let me give you something. Let's say you're taking lisinopril and you have Medicare. Let's say you're in a donut scenario where your secondary and your primary Medicare is no longer covering you. You're gonna be paying 20% for every single drug. So the copay over here of 20% will be 2,500 divided by five, $500. Your direct price with no insurance, $14. So this is gonna start driving a grassroot revolution in the insane pharmaceutical. Pharma is gonna resist this. I expect a lot of back and forth. They're gonna try to kill them, I'm sure, because they're gonna lose not millions, billions of dollars from these guys if they survive the original pressure. So pretty cool stuff. Um, so those are two, two big. Now I'm, I'm guessing other insurances or other uh, chains like CVS probably gonna follow Amazon suit because this is just so obvious. Um, now the formularies are gonna be very restrictive for a while. You can look up everything they have here. So everything's listed. That's all they have at the moment. So let's say you're taking some unusual blood pressure pill or just less common one. No way, you're not going to get it because it's not there. Um, but if it is here, that means you can get it. And some of these medications are very, very commonly used. Now, don't expect any controlled substances here. 
nor should you expect any control substances on Amazon. So if you're taking a sleeping pill, for example, which would be pretty much always controlled, well, not most of the time control substance, like like let's say Ambien or, or Lorazepam or something like this, they're not gonna be here because obviously the control substances prescriptions are quite different. But let's say you're going on a trip and you need to get Diamox, right? You're going to, I don't know, altitude and you're gonna take this look, I mean, so $69, probably more like $80 in our area, the typical price for the 10 day supply. So if you're paying $80, your copay is gonna be more than 930, right? And 15% included in this cost. So the only thing you pay here is $8 on top of this for shipping, $3 labor and then additional um, $5 shipping, that's it. Yeah. All right, with that, I'm going to stop sharing. I think my time's up. Is Reza here? Otherwise, I'll keep entertaining you guys, but there are questions. Let me check. All right, questions. Let's see. High cholesterol. Yeah, we can go back there. I can. Of note, Medicare and Medicaid are not accepted. Yeah, but Amazon is $5, the full price. Just like that one. It's the full price. You don't care about insurance. It's it's a full price of a drug. All you need is a doctor's prescription to be sent there. That's it. And, and you don't care about the insurance. You don't even submit it. Uh, no, it's just the drugs, the supplements. Well, they may have some vitamins there. There was vitamin D. Let me go back here for a second. I think they actually have calciferol, which is the synthetic vitamin D. If I don't, calcitriol, here we go. Five dollars for a month supply versus forty. That's a synthetic vitamin D. Um, somebody asked about cholesterol. That's a great, good, good one to look up. Let's see. So cholesterol. Uh, where would that be? Heart. Or there we go. So this is all of their high cholesterol pills right now. Let's pick something common. Um, Zocor, commonly used. Three dollars, Crestor five, Pravacol five, four eighty, Lipitor three hundred and sixty. Full price. This is not copay, guys. This is a full amount. This is what the drugs should cost, <laughs> and this is the future. Because if they survive, they're gonna kick out a lot of other places out of business, and the farmers gonna have to give in and you know play with this. Pharma, in a way, probably doesn't care because how do they? What do they care how they sell their drug, right? They just want to get their their money worth. But that also tells you how much money sits in between the manufacturer, between the actual pharmaceutical company that made the drug, and getting it into your hand. Like all of this ninety percent of cost just sitting there and then actually not going to the pharma. Anyway, all right, I get excited by strange things like this. Sorry. Why, Why did this happen before? United States of America. Want to read more about this? I highly recommend the book called Sickening by uh, a Harvard physician. It's a great book. Uh, let me see. Oh, Reza's here. Okay. All right. I'll, sh I'll shut up and pass the floor over. I'll put the link to the book over in there. And then uh, is there any other last question? This is going to be game changer. I completely agree. What about drugs have no generic yet? Uh, they have some brand names there too. You just Nisha. have to take a look. Nisha, yeah. let 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 Reza talk. <laughs> it's okay. Misha can uh, finish this. Okay, should I start or? I don't know if I. Uh, Go I'm... ahead and start. Oh, okay, you get start. Okay, good. Thank you guys so much. I'm Reza Eftikar. I'm a chiropractor here in the DC area. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about something a little different than last time, uh, which is physical and mental health and how they're so associated together. And I'm actually at a conference right now. As you can see, I have a badge on. And um, this was a big topic this year about how uh, we call it psychosomatic, where a lot of, especially after COVID, a lot of patients are coming in and I've noticed in a, a uh, an increased amount of it as well in my private practice where uh, a lot of patients coming in with a lot of mental trauma that's causing them physical trauma. And um, I, one of the researchers that, you know, I was spoken with, 
they said that the, the, this, the way they kind of put it together is that the brain doesn't know how to really deal with uh, sometimes if they don't deal with it correctly, if they don't see a professional, it, it doesn't know how to deal with it on its own. It stores it in your spine. And the first time I came across something like this where I had a patient come to me and this guy was, I mean, he, he was like a biker. I mean, he had a beard up to here, bald guy, you know, and I gave him one adjustment uh, to the mid back area and he started crying and profusely. He didn't even know how he was starting to cry. He couldn't even stop. He cried for 20 minutes straight. I don't think he has cried ever in his life. And, um, you know, he was a uh, Spanish guy from South America. Um, he didn't know why he was crying. So I spoke with a psychiatrist I knew, actually at GW, Ben. And that's what he kind of told me. So I went back. To, I was like, there's no way. I mean, this guy looked like a tough guy. I get and I talked to him. I said, hey, has there any been any trauma in previously? And he said, yes, I'm from Venezuela. And I was a political prisoner for so many years. And he has been tortured and put through a lot of stuff. And that has been stored. And, you know, he's a tough guy. And he didn't really seek treatment. He didn't seek any psychological, psychiatric evaluation, nothing. He really didn't do any treatment. So he's been storing all that in his spine, where one adjustment released a lot of tension. And I think that that's also um, psychologists and maybe even physical medicine doctors such as me, where we don't use each other as much as we should, where we should interact more because a lot of times uh, working on physical, as you know, exercise by itself has been proven to help you with mental health. And so is chiropractic care because that's sort of in the physical medicine department. And so th that really matters because if someone's going through a psychological um, evaluation and treatment, it really should be seen physical as well to be able to release a lot of tension. So I did want to kind of bring that up to light because it may, it may not be you that's listening. It may be somebody you know. And especially with a lot of situations been going on past few years through um, people not interacting as much, people not talking to each other much with Corona and um, a lot of from political to um, uh, monetary problems through uh, family issues and jobs and, and people going through a lot of hard times. So that's something to be aware of that people are starting to have a lot of physical ailments more than I've ever seen. I would tell you that um, we have within the chiropractic profession, there's a, um, uh, there's a few uh, practices who are sort of franchised. And one of them is actually on the stock market. It's called the joint. And I call them McDonald's of my profession. They're not really the best, but like people just go if they have a little bit of, and right now they have, their stock is worth $1,800, sorry, $18 a stock. During the pandemic, it was worth $120 a stock. It shot up after the pandemic so high is because people were just going in there in rows. And that was just my example. It just kind of from monetary perspective, how much money people are spending on physical health is that people are going through a lot of trauma and they're storing their spine and people are, everybody's tense. And that comes out again, doubles up in psychological and mood. You know, if somebody's in pain, so that psychological stuff, it stores in their spine, it causes them pain. So their mood changes and they, you know, at work with their family, with their loved ones, they don't, um, they, 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 they can't associate with people correctly and they can have even bad relationship where it will just add on as a cycle. And it's just like a cycle of death where it's just getting worse and worse. Um, I've had so many examples like that with patients that recently I had a, um, I had a patient two months ago, a nurse, uh, from Ethiopia and, um, she had one adjustment to her upper back. She started crying. And I said to her, this feels like one of those psychological. Books. And she didn't know how to say it. She came over with her friend and she was still crying. I left the room, bring some water, come back. And I saw them hugging him, her and her friend. They were hugging. And, you know, he's like, well, I want to tell you something. He said, Dr. Reza, I want to tell you. When I was 16, I was sexually abused. And, you know, in Ethiopia. And, um, and that has changed me, doesn't it? And so, you know, I sent her, uh, sent her to a psychiatrist as well as, as a counselor to take over. But at the same time, we were doing a lot of treatment where she was feeling so much better because 
She was just storing a lot of trauma in her spine. So we're trying to get her physical health right and then get her mental health correct. And this is a nurse. I mean, she's, you know, well-educated person that knows a lot. And so it doesn't matter who they are, what they are, what uh, socioeconomic, what, what job. Um, and you guys already know, the, especially doctors are the worst patients and anybody in the medical field, they don't really take care of themselves as much as they used to, but they should. But, um, but that's something that maybe you guys can look into other people, other family members and things that are friends of yours that you may notice things like their mood has been changed. They're just in a lot of pain and recommend to them. Hey, you should see a chiropractor. You should see a psychologist, some counselor, maybe a combination of both to really help with that. Uh, so with that aspect of it, the physical medicine portion of it, the problem is that a lot of people coming in with headaches, migraines, um, uh, neck pain, tingling numbness to the hands, pressure behind the eyes, um, low back pain, and they're injuring themselves constantly. And we try to rehab them, strengthen them, and make sure they're on the right track so they don't get any worse. So from a chiropractic perspective, what do we do? Uh, you know, one of the commonly associated things with chiropractic is the, is the adjustment, the cracking, popping those. Now, the question is, how do we do it? What do we Not everybody gets it. Everybody, it just depends on the person, the age, if they have osteoporosis. Blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of different factors and how much pressure you put onto it. But as chiropractors, we also associate, we're less associated with what we should be. I do equally, if not maybe a little bit more soft tissue work than I do at just adjustments. We do cupping, we do dry needling, we do laser, cold laser therapy, which gets that inflammation. We do obviously TENS unit, electrical stem, ultrasound, anything sort of uh, rehab related exercises like physical therapy. So my license is a chiropractor with, with uh, physical therapy privileges so i can do everything a physical therapist can do um, with diagnosis um, privileges as well and refer out patients so just like a physician status in addition to that but more rehab related and so there's areas of where i can go towards sports or i can go towards um uh, let's say uh, well i I deal with more like regular people where like they sit in front of desks and stuff like that, but some people go into work related injuries and many different factors in between. Uh, but I deal with more like family, uh, a more family chiropractic medicine where I deal with people that have chronic pain. Chronic pain is a number one leading factor of, especially low back pain. Chronic low back pain is number one leading factor of pain in America. And that's prob primarily because people are sitting a lot. And the old saying goes to say, sitting is a new smoking, where people are sitting so much, the disc is getting smaller, they have a lot of tension in their back, then they start to have arthritis and sciatica, things of that nature. And they come in when it's too late. So they come in when too late, they have shooting pain, then we try to rehab them as much as possible. Sometimes they need surgery, so we refer out. We send for MRIs and x-rays and CAT scans to evaluate that. We look to see if one leg is shorter than the other side. We try to evaluate that. And then based on range of motion, for example, bending forward, bend backwards, side to side. And then we, based on scans, imaging, range of motion, orthopedic tests, neurological evaluation, we give a diagnosis and a treatment plan. And a treatment plan could be anywhere from adjustments to physical medicine, such as rehab, exercises, and all the you know laser, dry needling, all that soft tissue stuff to take the tension off. Now, why do I think they're both the best? I think chiropractic and physical therapy, that's why I do both, is the best combo because chiropractic takes the tension off increased range of motion and physical therapy strengthens, mainly that's their concept, um, is strength the muscle to hold it there. I think that a lot of people come in sort of crooked, one shoulder lower than the side. If you look in the mirror, you might see your head is a little bit forward. First, we work on align you up, make sure your neck can move there because if you try to strengthen up the neck, but your neck doesn't move because when you take it back, you're like, I have neck pain. How can you really exercise that if you have pain to strengthen it? So what we do is we manipulate the neck to open it up. And then once the range of motion is there where you can do it, then we strengthen to hold it there. So that's the concept that we go by to make sure that people are healing properly. Um, and with that said, there's another factor of chiropractic where um, people are asking questions. Okay. Um, you know, I'm scared of getting adjusted. 
Well, with those people that are scared and adjusted, we don't have to do it. So it's not a mandatory, mandatory thing. We can just do rehab. Um, some people are asking, okay, um, I've, I've heard people are dying, you know, getting chiropractic adjustment. So the fact of the matter is that's true, but you have to look at the frequency of it. If you look at anything else, I, I'll give you an example. Um, malpractice insurance works like, um, works like car insurance. The more dangerous things you do, you pay more. I believe last time I looked at um, orthopedic surgeon pays a few hundreds, hundreds of thousands, maybe close to a million of malpractice insurance. I think primary care pays about, they pay about 40 to $60,000 a year uh, uh, for a few million dollars of coverage. As a chiropractor, I, I get $4 million, $4 million of coverage for $1,500 a year. So based on the factor the, of dangerousness, the insurance company have done the math notice that carbon are actually less dangerous than primary care because they prescribe medicine and all those medications have bad side effects that can injure and damage people further. Um, people, you know, people are asking, okay, what are the odds of me dying at a carbide office? Um, it's not really dying, but do some people do get strokes? And the chance of that is you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning, but the research has shown that um, the chance of getting a stroke at a chiropractor office is exactly equal to getting one at a primary care office and exactly equal to you driving out of your driveway and you're looking behind you trying to drive back because those people that get the strokes already have atherosclerosis, which in my exam, we, we, die, we do some exam, orthopedic tests, some, neuro, uh, some exams to this, certain tests we can do to manage that be through the eyes um, to get an idea. Plus there's hypertension, any heart disease and things of that nature. But those are so extreme rare because if, if you're not scared of driving, dying in a, in a car accident, then you definitely should be scared of that because they're more frequent people die in a car accident than they would anything else. But these things are extreme rare. So I just want to kind of put a lot of things to bed. And there's a lot of research behind it because the person that gets a stroke at a car bag office and so I'll give you an example for when I was at University of Maryland, um, I had a patient referred to me in the hospital by the primary care and the primary care did his exams that he was supposed to go through the red flags and send a patient to me. So I'm saying there, the patient comes in for low back pain after a car accident. I said, okay, I'm talking to her. What's going on with your low back? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, at the end, I said, Hey, anything else you want to tell me? She's like, yeah, I told the primary care, every time I look up, my right eye goes black. I said, excuse me. He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, do it right now. She looked up. She's like, oh, there it is. Just, I, I remember just, she pointed. She's like, oh yeah, there it is. So I said, okay, let's send you to the ER to get that checked out. I sent it to the ER. The ER doctor calls us later. She's like, as she's sitting in the waiting room, she's getting a stroke. And just imagine if I put my hands on her. <laughs> Good thing I just talked to her. But these are things that you have to evaluate through screening, first verbally, then uh, tests um, to catch these things. Because some of these patients come in with that, and they just happen to be at a chiropractor office. It could have been at the primary care office two minutes before, because if the doctor said, okay, turn your head and cough, and she could have busted her artery right there at a primary care office right before um, coming to me. And, she, you know, the primary care office, uh, I was in an integrated medicine center where it was right across the hallway from me. So she went from there, came over here to see me. And so I've caught many things like that. I've caught people with cancer, um, stage four cancer. I've, I had a patient just died two weeks ago. And last year she came to me. Um, she was like, yeah, I've been going to my primary care. I'm having stomach pain. I said, okay. I touched the area. I said, I feel some lumps, there, but... She's like, no, 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 my primary care said it's fine. You just need some, um, my fascial release. It just like most working on the muscle. I was like, okay, well, I mean, since you already examined, I, I trust the fact they did something. So uh, I, I did some treatment with her. One visit, two visits. She's like, no, I still have it. I sent her to the ER. The ER doctor saw her and said, oh, no, it's nothing. You're fine. Go see your primary care. She comes back to me. I palpate the area. I was like, no, I feel, I see lumps in there. I sent her back to the ER. She sent back to me. I, I said, okay, well, I, you know, I like to just stay in my lane. So I 
you know, I don't want to get involved with that kind of, because that's a different specialty. But I had no choice but to get involved with that. I sent her for a CAT scan of her stomach and she had really bad metastasized cancer in her stomach. Mm. And uh, unfortunately it caught too late. They did surgery. Anyway, long story short, you know, there's a lot of things that happen at any doctor's office where they don't examine properly. You know, doctors don't touch patients anymore. It's, it's everything just like, just kind of, um, not really um, paid attention to as much as they used to where palpation was key. You know, I do palpation on everybody on a car bike. My hands are, you know, sensational. My hands are key. But from that That's perspective, cool. yes, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but um, can we see if folks have questions? Yes, yes, absolutely. I was, uh, I was done anyway. So that's my last thing. Um, uh, and yes, any questions? Let's see. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was looking at the chat. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, good. Let's see. Dr. John Sarno, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, um, you and Misha should have a talk offline about him. Uh, Misha knows all about him. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank He's God. no longer with us, but his um, his influence continues. So. Gotcha. I am going to thank you for taking yes. time while you're at a conference. You are a rock yes. star. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for waiting. Um, and then I see somebody said Sadika. Yes, we treat Sadika. Um, if you go on my, if you have any social media, check out my favorite doctor on Instagram or TikTok, and you can find my website and you can look up all the information. My favorite doctor is the social media account. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Misha. Appreciate you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, Michael. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you. Hello, everybody. Um, good to be here again. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, today I would like to go uh, one step further into studying uh, certain applications of Qigong. Uh, and body energetics. And I would suggest that we start, we shift gears a little bit from uh, sort of like mental cognitive processing of um, the information that we received just now from our colleagues. So let's uh, shift gears and go back into the, our bodies and uh, Maybe we would breathe a little bit. Just feeling how the air enters our chest and experiencing these breathing movements. Paying attention to the heartbeat. And just um, scan your body a little bit. Just see where the holding patterns are. Maybe there is some discomfort or even pain. Or maybe your body would feel completely comfortable and at ease at this point. So let's scan the body. It's looking within. And take a note of everything that is there in the body to be aware of. Maybe discomfort, maybe pain. And please take what I call an inner photograph or an inner snapshot of uh, what it is right now that you feel and experience. 
internal. And we'll need this uh, inner snapshot as sort of a baseline that we establish right now. And overall, it's a very good technique to become aware of what's going on. And that would be our inner snapshot before we do anything. So then later, we could compare it with the inner snap snapshot after we work a little bit and see what happens. And having done that, um, let's um, let's put our hands like this, and maybe spread them a, a little bit wider, and see if you can feel your hands on the inside. Feel your hands up with this attention air or attention gas. And as you start moving your hands very slowly closer, see when you can see that first contact that your hands will feel. Sometimes the contact could be felt at a certain distance as some kind of a very faint sensation of this touching without any physical touching, sort of like energetic touching. And see how close you have to come until one hand starts sensing another. And it varies with your mood, with daytime sometimes, it's not always the same. So when you when you feel something, pay attention to what exactly is it that you're feeling. It could be undescribable. Normally it is. Or maybe you could say, hmm, I feel warmth or I feel tingling or pressure or whatever. So it's not that important to put it into words as it is important to really sense of what's going on. And after you felt this connection between your hands without touching, just stop at that point and enjoy that sensation of this ethereal connection between our wonderful extremities. And just stay with it, enjoy it. And now let's uh, let's engage that which is called the inner smile. You would smile with your entire body, with your lips, with your face, hands as well, your heart. The whole body lights up with, with a smile. So in Qigong term, we just introduce that type of joy energy. That's all we're doing. 
It's just a different type of energy we're introducing into our uh, inner domain right now. And after you've done that, see if anything changed in the hand contact that you're experiencing right now. Did anything change? And if, if it did, what exactly was it that changed? And at this point, we have our hands in this position of mutual sensing. And maybe you could move it just a tiny bit closer, maybe like one or two millimeters. And then move it one or two millimeters back literally almost imperceptible movements, just a tiny, tiny bit, like 1 16th of an inch, 1 32nd of an inch. You might feel certain tension, certain something in, in between your hands at this point that is kind of a, sensible, maybe like a ball of energy, maybe like uh, the space is filled with some kind of resistance, as if there was like a, like in a little balloon in between your hands. And at this point, if you feel that little something that is kind of resistant to that movement that you're doing, some kind of ball or like a balloon-like uh, formation between your hands, keep your inner smile glowing and start breathing from your heart into your hands, filling up this Balloon in between your hands with this joyful, beautiful energy of love and joy. As if you are breathing not through your nostrils, but through your palms at this point. And as you breathe and feel this space, this balloon between your hands with this joyful energy of smile and love, maybe you could feel that something is changing again in your sensation. And pay attention to what exactly is changing at this point. And now let's very gently lift this ball of energy up <clears throat> and do a type of blessing, sort of moving in all the way through the crown of your head, very slowly saturating your body with this energy and feel as if your hands are going inside your body, creating this warm wave of joy. Keep smiling.
And you can bring your hands up again, gathering even more energy from the sky. That beautiful radiant energy of the sky, of the sun, vast universe above, and very gently moving it through your body, through the hot crown of your hand, uh, head. And you can do it as slow or as fast as you want, as long as you have an inner sensation. As you go up, you, you collect the energy of the earth and you rotate your palms up, collect the energy of the sky, mix the energies together, and then very gently push them through. And you can lower your elbows so they don't have to be to the side, they could be down, so there is more relaxation. And keep doing this movement. which is called the cup or more poetically, the chalice in Qigong. And then you could put your hands on your knees and go back on the breath. And as you breathe, just take this inner inventory of your body, of your mind, of your psyche, and see what changed this time about from the inner snapshot we, talk, we took in the beginning. And now we take the inner snapshot after this chalice exercise and see what have changed in your inner universe, in your mind, in your psyche, in your body. And at this point, if you see the change, just make note of it. And now we're going to sensitize our hands a little bit more. We could start again, kind of a little bit apart and slowly move them all the way together, seeing this change that happens as hands come closer and closer. Maybe you can feel pressure of the energy that goes from one hand to another, maybe warmth, maybe tingling. Everyone has one's own sensation. And when hands join, finally, just leave them barely touching one another, very gently like you would touch a newly born child. And feel this contact on both sides, on the right hand side and on the left hand side. They could be different. 
because we're sensing from within. It's not our usual touch that we are exercising throughout the day, taking, you know, a cup of coffee or opening a car, tapping on a keyboard. It's a different type of sensation. We, we're really sensing it from the inside. And at this point, start breathing through your hands, through your fingers, as if they were nostrils. And do it from your heart, smiling with joy. And see what happens when you breathe through this almost imperceptible barrier at this point. Is there any kind of exchange between the surfaces of the hands? Again, sense it on the left side and on the right side as well, because they might be different. And relax your shoulders, relax your stomach. Don't hold it up because that's kind of straining. You relax it is much easier to do. Keep smiling with your body, with your face, with your forehead, eyes, heart, with your belly, with your hands. And at this point, very gently start stroking or caressing very slowly. You would move your hands in whichever way you want. You could do slightly rotating movements like experiment. And please do it so you would feel a very pleasant sensation from this caressing movement. It's very gentle, very subtle, but pleasurable and see how you can give your hands this pleasure of contact. And keep smiling, please, as you do it. And see what's happening if you can, not only in your hands on both sides, but also inside your body as you do it. How does the whole body change when we do this? And of course, some of us know that in sujok therapy, they use hands as maps of the entire body. So what we're doing right now is, is we're working with the entire body right now. And, and after we've done that, move your hands back into that position, which was before, slightly apart, but still sensing that connection that we have. Now our hands are sensitized. They can feel much more, hopefully. If, it, if there is no change, that's okay as well, because you could practice it and then see the difference. And see what kind of change do you feel right now uh, in this non-physical contact? How did the permeability of the skin and permeability of the hand itself change? What is this new sensation like? And you can take a couple of in breaths and out breaths, filling this space again with energy as you breathe. And 
and take this ball of energy again. And at this point, you would lower it and then contact your head, touch it, and bring this pleasurable sensation to your head, to your face, very slowly, kind of taking away all of the tension that you have to your throat, to your chest, to your stomach, down to your thighs, and then coming off your knees. And maybe let's do it like once more. Taking this universe of energy, feeling this mirth and joy, smiling, contacting your head, and making a very pleasurable journey with your palms over your face, your eyes, cheeks, the throat, the chest, the stomach, the thighs, and rest with your hands on your knees. And please pay attention to the inner universe at this point. Take the inner snapshot again. And compare your first initial snapshot with what you feel right now. What changed in your body, in your mind, in your psyche, emotional sphere, how do you feel? Thank you very much. That's our practical applications of Qigong that we studied last time a little bit. And um, if you could please say aloud instead of writing, <clears throat> just a few words about if you if you want what changes you've observed and if you can please speak from that state which you have right now like let the state speak and just say just a few words if if, if you want to more energy in my body full cool. Rested and joyful. Thank you, dear friends, for this opportunity to be with you today. Thank you. And I hope to see you again. And thank you, uh, GW Center, for this beautiful uh, space that you guys create for everyone to become healthy and connected see you again thank you reza thank you michael so much um everybody will see you next friday janet who do we have next week okay uh, actually drapeau is going to give us a wellness talk mm -hmm. um that will include basically a rundown on the low on your lo long covid clinic or program um, and Catherine Miller uh, is uh, from um, Four Directions Wellness, will be with us to do the mind body practice. Everybody, have a great weekend. Thank Bye. you. Bye. -bye. Stay warm, everyone. Yep. Bye. Have a good weekend. Oops.